Hey, so I just watched this whole game and commented it, it and forgot to push record, so I'm watching it for the second time, not the first time. And so I'll skip right to the important parts. First, your build was a little a little sloppy. Uh, what you want is supply, racks, racks, supply. Well, really, supply, racks, gas, orbital, racks, supply. And instead of that, you went for supply, racks, gas, orbital, which is the correct opening part. But then, when this guy finishes the racks, he's supposed to go build another racks, and instead you send him back to mine, and then you're going to come out here and make a supply. You don't need this supply depot. You're not going to you're not gonna cap on supply if you cut this marine and instead make your reactor core right now. You have more than enough gas. Make the first marine. You can maybe even make a second marine if you want, but definitely start building your reactor core a lot earlier. And because your reactor core is so late, um, you build three marines before your reactor core, What's going to happen is your money is going to start to get very high. Um, and because this, this second racks is pretty late, your money is going to get high. And the third racks is perfect. I like that you built the third racks right now. That was good timing for the third racks. So first, I would also like to say that um, three racks is a terrible TVT build. You should never ever do three racks TVT. Um, and second, I would like to say you should never do three racks with double reactor core against TVT. That's even more terrible because Terran... Okay, Protoss has a really good counter to Marines, which is Colossus, but he can't get them until like 12 minutes into the game without being really weak. So it's acceptable to make a bunch of Marines because for the first 12 minutes they're really strong and they're awesome. But Terran can have Siege Mode done at 6 minutes. That's crazy. Like he's already got Siege Mode. Every Marine you make from now on is completely pointless. So you chose a build that just is not valid in TVT. There is a way to use Marines in TVT, and uh, it relies upon counterattacking and being agile and quick and having medevacs and stim and surviving until you can finish medevacs and stim, and this was not it. And I would, I would actually say it's probably outside of almost everyone that I know's ability to do, because it relies a lot on seeing where his army is and deciding in a split second whether to fight or go around, whether to pick up and, and run away or pick up and go drop, all that kind of stuff. It's very it's very quick decision making dependent. Anyway, look at six hundred and seven hundred bucks in your bank. This is because these reactor cores just finished right now. Uh there was a big gap in your build before the reactor cores finished where you could have lost. So a typical three racks is very strong at six minutes. That's one of the main advantages of the three racks is you make a six minute push. There used to be a six minute um, stim timing push but now people do stick six minute concussive shell pushes or six minute uh, combat shield pushes. Um, where right at six minutes you have a one thousand two hundred dollar army and you come kill your opponent because almost no one can get a thousand two hundred bucks at this point. So uh, you only have four hundred and fifty bucks at, at, at the six minute mark and if somebody did a three racks and pushed they would have killed you. And if somebody had done a two racks uh, with no add-ons and pushed they would have killed you. And if somebody did a proxy three racks they would have killed you. That, like lots of things would have killed you. This is not safe and on top of not being safe it's just not a good idea. So that's it's just a bump in your build. It's it's a little bump and you're going to get over it quickly. As soon as your money gets back to zero, the fact that the bump happened is irrelevant. So if your opponent doesn't attack you during the bump, then it doesn't matter that you had a bump. But someday someone's going to attack during that bump and you're going to regret it. Uh this is very ballsy. You're expoing without a bunker with a bump. So your army is very small and you're expoing. So if you're going to have the balls to expo pretty quick behind almost nothing, I would like to see you have double the balls because this is going to lose to a lot of things and that's fine. If you want to do a build that's going to lose to a lot of th things, totally fine with me. But you might as well do a one racks fast expand, you know? Because this build would have lost to three racks and a one racks fast expand would have lost to three racks. They'd both lose to a three racks and if you're okay with losing to certain attacks, then you might <laughs> you might as well get an expo up uh, three minutes earlier, you know? So, I I would prefer that you go racks factory or if you're gonna depend heavily on racks I would prefer a much earlier command center and if you're not gonna make a bunker and if you're gonna just decide that it's okay to be completely vulnerable to an early siege tank push then I would like to see you do one of the builds that's vulnerable to a siege tank push but gives you a huge advantage if you survive it like a, a one racks fast expand <laughs> or a two racks fast expand or any of that stuff like your opponent did in this game he got his 
expo a lot quicker than you. So uh, you see two siege tanks right now, and if if you cut your losses right now, you lost nothing. Wow, siege tanks! I shouldn't attack. Anytime you're focusing heavily on marines, the way to use marines against siege tanks is never to be within this white circle ever, ever, ever. And never to fight siege tanks with marines, okay? Siege tanks cannot fight marines. Ugh. So, secondly, if you're forced to fight marines, and you shouldn't be, you should never fight marines with, uh, fight tanks with marines, then you want to do something like move this uh, marauder up here while you stop for a second with your marines so that the marauder isn't next to the marines and they don't get splashed then pull your like half your marines up this way and half your marines this way so that they're walking in a big spread out line instead of a little clump because the splash is what makes tanks really powerful tanks are actually very low damage and very low health per dollar um, but what makes up for it is the splash they're hitting four guys per shot so they're doing four times their actual natural damage Marines have a very, very small circle, so they can stand very, very close together. So they, the fact that they can stand so close together, like Zerglings or SCVs, makes them very vulnerable to every kind of AoE. And you can counter that by doing a good, good job spreading them out. Um, so that was terrible. This game is basically over unless somebody makes a really big mistake. But it's, it's very hard to come back from spending a huge chunk of change, getting a later expo than somebody, and then losing your entire army. Um, so we, we can watch the rest of the game, but only uh, for with which to explain other mistakes you made. So at 8 minutes you have 28 workers, which is perfect, that's great. You've done a great job of building workers from this up until this moment. Um, actually, at 8 minutes you want 28, but you had 27, I think? Yeah, you had 28. So up until right now, you've been doing a great job of producing SCVs, but now you stopped. Um, because of the attack, because you're paying attention to the attack. So you missed some, some SCVs there, you're missing some SCVs here, you're missing some SCVs now. You're missing some SCVs now, you're missing some SCVs now. Okay, so now we're at 10 minutes where you want to have 39 off of one command center and 44 if you've expanded. And since you've expanded, you would want 44. So you, even though you did so great on SCVs early on, you only have 32 now, which is short by like 12, which is 12 is probably about 30% of your economy. So your economy is 30% smaller than it would have been if you had constantly been queuing up SCVs. Luckily, your opponent is also in the Silver League, and he has also missed many SCVs, so you guys have a pretty even economy. Um, but uh, one of the one of the quickest ways to get out of the Silver League is to get good at not missing SCVs. In the first game and in this game, you missed a lot of SCVs late. You did great early, and you did really a lot worse when you got your second command center up. And that's because there's just your income goes from being 800 bucks to to 1500 or 2000 and it's a lot easier to spend 800 bucks every minute than it is to spend 1600 bucks every minute. Um so macro gets harder the bigger your income is and so big income players tend to win more because it's so hard to do. Anyway, your opponent is just massing siege tanks and siege tanks is a very hard counter to mass marine. Uh I would say you're pretty much dead. You know? Even if you hadn't blown that early attack, there, there's just no way you're going to take marines and kill siege tanks. That's just silly. So uh, when people mass marine in TVT, they're not relying on the marines to be good. What they're relying on is the marines and the medevacs with stim and combat shields together to be good. So you need a ton of medevacs to make marine a viable strategy. And the reason I say that is because you come down here and you see tanks and you say, oh no, there's some tanks. I'm going to attack. My medevacs are going to heal up the stim I just used. As soon as he hits this, you're going to run back away over here so he doesn't get a single shot off with his tanks. And then you're going to pick up in your medevacs and walk down, or fly down here and over and drop on his base. And if he comes and kills your base, you base trade. You get to kill his, he gets to kill yours. 